Now as we move on to some of the test protocols, the actual shutdown test. There's quite a few different parts of this process that we're gonna be looking at this morning. One, obviously, is preparation. How do we prepare for this whole thing? So this is where we find for a lot of folks who have been in the enforcement for a number of years, they're finding that preparing properly is gonna make their whole process for site inspection and shutdown tests more effective. When we start looking for the annual water inspection, I mean, we find that inspecting the facility for cross connections, understanding from the perspective of a specialist, a cross connection control specialist, that's something you generally have been trained to do. How do we find cross connections? But now we're specifically dealing with a separate recycled water system that's also on site and understanding that you know this cross-connection test may be required periodically to physically determine that the systems are not interconnected. We can't always see all the pipes. We know they're buried in the ground, in the walls, so an inspection can only take us so far. So this is where the actual cross-connection test is one of the tools we may need to do this more effectively. As part of that annual inspection, the review the drawings with the site supervisor, sitting down with that designated person, whoever that may be, reviewing the drawings, have any changes been made? And this is where we rely heavily on that site supervisor to let us know what's happened in between our periodic inspections. And then actually making any, uh, visually in inspect any changes, you know, what has been going on on site. And again, depending on the complexity of the system, this may be a rather short uh, amount of time necessary, more complex, may be a much more detailed inspection. You know, things such as verifying the location of the potable and recycled water meters. Are they correctly installed? I mean, nothing should have changed in this period of time, but this is one of the things you may verify. You know, where are they located and has anything changed? What about the backfill preventers? If backfill preventers are installed on their potable water system, are they properly installed? Has something been modified? We recognize over the years that changes take place, modifications have occurred, uh, has the assembly been changed out for some reason, and then also the records of annual field testing. This is where, again, we're relying on that backfill preventer to continue to function properly. So this will be part of that inspection, verifying that the backfill preventer themselves is working properly. The recycled water access points, are they easily identified? And this is where signage becomes so important. Is the signage in good condition? As signage on an exterior of a building or outside, we see things get faded, damaged, broken, removed, stolen. So this is where we need to verify that all the signage belongs where it's supposed to be. It's in good condition, legible and visible. And this is where we've talked to a lot of folks during their inspections, finding that this sometimes is a weak link. Those sign, signage uh, may be damaged, covered up, and they need to you know, annually verify that they're all in the proper location. Then as we look at the uh, list of individuals who have access, you know, they may be reviewing what training's gone on. You know, is there a change in site supervisor? You know, as personnel change, who is the new site supervisor? What employees or workers outside contractors are being used? These are things that, again, depending on the complexity of the system, there may be more people involved. So understanding what changes may be taking place will help us to understand the degree of our inspection and what we have to verify. I know a lot of you may probably have some simple type of inspection report. And the inspection report can take on a lot of different shapes and sizes. Uh, you know, How much detailing do you want? Is it just a simple checkoff sheet that you're just going down and verifying? Uh, you may find as you look at these reports, I mean, they're all just a multitude that I've seen where they may have information detailing things, you know, proper piping, what valves, uh, what's actually going on on site. So again, you may find that some of these are very helpful to you. 
uh, you're just not hitting a box you know at the bottom saying everything looks good but you verified all of the specific points you know for this particular situation so any uh, information you have if you do have any of your inspection reports our office would always be interested not that we'll distribute them to everybody but we're just curious to see what has worked for people so if you have a specific form or application that you found has been very effective uh, we'd like to be able to you know make sure we can offer that kind of information to other people too. So again, we look for your help. Um, and now when we're actually looking at that report distribution, you know, after you do go through the process of inspecting, you know, who gets this report? You know, the inspecting entity, whoever that may be, the administrative authority, site supervisor, the recycled water agency, and other regulatory agencies. Many of you have a, a very specific distribution list that you need to make sure uh, gets out to those specific uh, people that need it. So this is where the site supervisor normally keeps their on-site records. And as you come back on your annual inspections, it may just be re-verification, you know, that nothing has changed. 